you have any questions, you should go ahead and raise your hand. You're done with all three eighteen? Can I see it? No, Yeah, let me see it. And I want to So you should be working quietly together. If you are working together, uh, there's other people trying to study, so try to be respectful. Which ones do we need to do? They're on the board 15, 16, 17, and 18.
Does anyone need more time on those questions? Okay. I'll give you about five, six more minutes. Uh, don't worry if you don't finish up to 18 today, Trevin. Are you okay? Let's bring it down enough. It's going to be okay, guys. Great. So I'll give you about five to six more minutes, and then we'll get started on the presentation for conflicts in Utah. And then I'll break you guys into some groups and we'll get working on that uh, guide graphic organizer that I just passed out. Okay? Great. So go ahead and put your guide aromas away. Uh, if you didn't get if you didn't get through the questions, that's okay. We'll have time to work on the next class period as well. They will be due next week, uh, not at the beginning though. So don't stress. Honestly, we'll have plenty of time to work on the next class period. We're gonna get started on conflicts in Utah, right? So last week we talked, or earlier this week we talked about the Transcontinental Railroad. Again, Transcontinental. Someone in class. Transcontinental means. Thank you. Yeah, it's across the entire continent. So it covers from one end of the continent to the other. Uh, brought in a ton of settlers, supplies, new shops. Quinn, are you alright? Yeah. All right. Keep it together, guys. Great. So some of the positive effects that came from it mining was easier, faster to travel. 
spread technology faster, which is always a good thing. Some of the negatives, again, they were just taking land from the natives willy-nilly. They're like, this is our land now. Uh, train robbery, we're going to watch the Butch Cassidy film uh, later on in the semester. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, competition from stores outside of Utah, we talked about supply and demand. Again, that's opening up the free market here in Utah, so not everyone's buying from their, their neighbors anymore. They can get what they want from the train supplies. So we covered a few things about physical maps, how the territories changed. Uh, just kind of bring you back into what we were talking about. It's un it was unorganized territory at the time. That's where they set up a lot of the Native American reservations for the U.S. We'll cover that in U.S. history, but good question. Appreciate that. So there's a few few pictures we went through. We did the, the role play. You guys remember that. We showed a bunch of pictures about what was happening at the railroads, how things were put together. It's all coming back to us, right? People just laying track for miles and miles and miles through the mountains. Hi, welcome. Some of the workers that were working, Irish and Chinese immigrants, shipping. Yeah. So this is what we covered last class period. Let's see if we can get to Native American settlers. So this is where we pick up. So the Transcontinental Railroad is done. The, the pioneer migration ended in 1913, right? That's what we talked about last class period. And so now there's settlements. They've set up the grid systems all up and down the valley. Uh, which used to be native lands, and so there, there's going to be some conflicts. Why, why would there be conflicts between the settlers and natives? Yes, ma'am. Because they originally got land as their land. Yeah, so they, the, they both want to settle the land. They both want the food. Claire, what were you going to say? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So the natives didn't have... Yeah, so they were European diseases and natives didn't have any immunity to them. And so a lot of uh, natives were dying in the area from the settlers. You guys need a pen? Are you sharing one pen? These, these two gentlemen here. Are you guys okay? Great. Let's focus in on what's going on. Great. So pioneer settler population growth and native population <coughs> decrease. So here's some graphs that show from 1846 to 1900. So settlers were less than 25 to natives 20,000, and then this, or greater than 25, and then less than 20,000, and then settlers were less than 300,000, and natives were greater than 2,500. Yeah, so you can see kind of the stark contrast between when they started coming in and then after the railroad were complete, how much settlers were coming into the area. So why is that a problem? Why is that a problem with this, this amount of people coming into the area? Yeah. 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 So there wasn't a ton of sources for food, right? And so there was a ton of people fighting over the sources, right? Yeah, so if food runs out, like, what happens? Right, people, people can't eat, right? So here's some reasons that they kind of push the, the natives out of the lands a little bit. So we talked about disease a little bit. Pioneers and settlers brought the new diseases to the area. Influenza, that's just the flu. Tuberculosis, scarlet fever, measles, and smallpox, uh, and then a reduction of food supply because the settlers were, again, hunting all of the food that the natives usually had, taking a lot of the farmlands, and just pushing them out of there. So why why conflicts? I know we talked about a few reasons why this would be happening. Are there any like other reasons you can think of? Owen, did you have any thoughts? What did you write about? Oh, well, I the wrote the conflict. Uh, because of the railroads. So the railroads brought more people in, right? Yeah. You wrote about that. And the taking Okay, yeah, that was another big one we talked about. So yes, Samantha. I said that the Indians, when they brought to the they didn't know how to cure for them. They didn't know how to Yeah, so they, there wasn't a ton of advanced medicine in the native tribes, so they weren't able to kind of cure the people that, that were getting sick. 
So conflict between settlers and Native Americans during this time. Uh, do you think that the conflicts were only between Native American and settlers? What about settlers and settlers? No. Would there be conflicts between immigrants coming in after the church stopped bringing people in, or would it would it be tribes between tribes? Yeah, it's really situational. So uh, settlers knew and understand um, that the natives didn't really like all of each other. Like there were some tribes that got along, like the the Shoshone and the Utes that did really well together, just because they lived pretty similar lifestyles and they understood each other's boundaries. But then they also knew that others didn't really like some of the native tribes, so they started putting them against each other. Uh, we talked about the native land being taken, trading disputes, cultural disputes. So we talked about this during our cahoots, uh, cultural differences and misunderstandings. So what's, it, what's an issue if you're having an argue, argument with someone, but you don't speak their language? Uh, you can't help you. What were you going to say, Trevin? You don't know what they're saying. Yeah, so you don't really know what they're saying. You don't know what they're upset about, right? So how is that going to cause an, uh, even more of an argument? Uh, if you can see their anger, I guess. Yeah. You can't see their anger. Yeah, so have you ever been in an argument with someone and, and they're just like, it doesn't matter what you say? Like, whatever you're saying doesn't matter? My dad. So that's kind of what was going on. That's not exactly the example I was going for, but yeah. So they, they, they'll say that, and you, it, just doesn't, it just makes you more angry, right? That's going to cause more of a conflict. So we just talked about this, how all the native tribes didn't really like each other. Here's a picture of a Ute, Ute tribesman with his young wife. So most sellers, in, so there was a flip side of this coin. Like, yeah, there were conflicts, but most of the settlers tried to get along with the natives. So here's a picture of some native family with this white gentleman just having a good time. Uh, even with their cultural differences, the settlers and natives did try to live peacefully. Uh, when settlers were starving in the winter, many of the Native Americans helped them find food, uh, helped them with where to farm, where the, the soil was most fertile. Uh, the Indian Relief Society was part of the, the pioneers coming in. Settler women would make clothing for Native women and children. So we, we try to, they try to get along together, but it, like I said, it didn't always work out. So there were a lot of conflicts. Here's a few things that the U.S. government was doing with Native Americans in the time. Assimilation, does anyone know what assimilation means? Assimilation. What does it mean? That is the word, yes. Does anyone have an idea of what assimilation is? Oh, like a, a simulation? Yeah, that's not it. So assimilation is basically taking someone from their culture and bringing them, uh, telling them that it's not right, essentially, and then like trying to, to make them your culture because it's ethnocentrism, right? We talked about that, how like people from Europe believe that their culture is the best, right? They're more amazing than all of the natives. And so they're, they're trying to convince the natives to start living like they do. So they they start bringing them in. So here's a here's an interesting picture. So there's one a Native American gentleman, and this is after assimilation. What the Same guy. No, that is not. So the U.S. government and the Mormons would try to force natives to act and live like white people. Uh, they had native farms and schools set up for them to kind of transition into white society. Yes, sir. When I when I first started teaching. Uh, they did what they called Indian placement program. They would, yeah. they would bring Native Americans and put them in homes, you know, of, of families here in Utah. And I had a lot of those students in my class. And it was difficult for them because what they were trying to do is take a Native American and make them a white person. And, and it didn't work very well. Yeah, it's, yeah, so it was really difficult for a lot of these Natives who had been living a certain way their entire lives. Their family had been living a certain way. And then people came in and settled and were like, you need to live like us, right? You need to, you need to do this differently, because our way is better. So that's going to cause even more conflicts as well. Here's, here's an interesting picture. So Spanish Fork was uh, one of the Indian farms that were caught up with. And, you know, the, they brought them in, so you can see the kind of the settlement behind there, and just had them farm for them, and showed them how to farm, which lands to farm. 
So here's part of the relocation. This was another thing we talked about. So this is uh, native lands. You can see Utah up here. This is Navajo land right here. Uh, this little portion here is Hopi, Hopi Reservation. So this is these are all uh, natives of the Southwest. This is focusing on the Navajo tribe, though. So in 1884, the Navajo Indian Re Reservation was created. So the national government was creating reservations for these people to live, even though they lived where we were living, or the settlers were living at that time. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm not entirely certain. They might just be like certain, certain like uh, areas where they had set up uh, centers. Yes, sir. So they weren't necessarily teaching them how to farm because the natives had farming systems in the area. They were just showing them their way of farming essentially more agricultural for the entire community instead of just like for certain family groups. Yes, sir? I was distracted. Oh, okay. Right on. So another, some more pictures of relocation. Again, we did the gallery, or the gallery walk where you guys did the QR codes. You could see that the natives controlled most of Utah, right? And this is, this is another picture showing where they set up the reservations. So there's Utes, right? There's Navajo. The Paiute tribe reservation, yeah, way, way tiny. Yeah, so it was difficult for the, the natives to kind of transition from this, right, where they had the entire state, to these little kind of, yeah, insignificant areas that they moved them into. So here's some, some of the names of the reservations. You don't have to know this for an exam. I just thought that was, they had some interesting names. Yeah, Skolbot Valley, Shivwitz. Just some interesting names for the native reservations. Sovereignty is another one that they did. So they're given power to govern themselves. They were given the reservation land. Um, and then in 1934, Native Americans won the right to have tribal councils where they would govern themselves continuously. So there's no, no interference with the U.S. government on those. Great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break off into groups. And we're going to put together some posters based on some of the conflicts that we had in Utah. So what I'll do is I'll just number you off one to five, and then I'll move you around the room, okay? Remember your number, please. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, Two, three, four, five. Great. So what I want you to do now, I want all the ones. Class, can I have all of the ones come over here? All of the twos over here in this corner. I get my own personal All of the threes in this back corner. Threes. All of the fours in this back corner over here. Um, yeah, we might use we might utilize the pod. So, can I get all the fives? Oh. Try. Right. Four. Two five. Can I get all the fives over here, please? So I'll put up the instructions for your posters and I'll pass out the material. Again, your, your group is only responsible for one conflict, okay? So on that graphic organizer that I passed out, it looks like this. If you're a one, you're going to be the Walker War. Ones, you hear me? So your Walker War, the twos are going to be the Go Shoot War, three is the Bear River Massacre, four is the Black Hawk War, and five is the Posey War. The pages that you need to look on are on your graphic organizer, so don't forget to grab a Utah history book. Fives? Trevin, you guys listening? Do you have a Utah history book? 
Great, so the pages that you need to look on for your conflict are on your graphic organizer. And you're responsible for one conflict. You should have all of the boxes for your conflict filled out and then start working on your poster, okay? So once you're done filling out your graphic organizer for your specific conflict, uh, just go ahead and start working on your poster. Uh, feel free to use coloring pencils or anything you have available to you. Make it as creative as possible. The instructions for the poster are up on the board. Thank you. 
However you guys feel, be, be as creative as you want to. As long as everyone, as long as everyone can see it. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, that's fine.
time on their posters?
So if you guys are finished your hands, start working on part of your unit two project, just kind of like get that out. Try to have an idea of what, how that's going to look. Or if you're behind and you've got a ROM of zero. Wait, that's like crazy. Yeah. So it doesn't look like we're going to have enough time to do the presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll finish this up in the next class period. Sure. It doesn't have a home button or anything. It just has a home button. Again, make sure you have every single group member's name on your poster. We'll, we'll, we'll get to finish these up next class period. Where do you want to 
Bring, hey, bring your posters up here. Turn them in. We'll work on the next class period if you're not done. We'll do the presentations for these next class period as well so you guys can finish filling out those graphic organizers. That's mine. Everyone should be sitting down in their assigned seats. I don't know why you're lining up at the door. Please work on your, your guideramas or your Unit 2 projects until the bell rings. Please work quietly on either your guideramma or your Unit 2 project. Good, sir. You're done with your Unit 2 project? Class can have your attention in five, four, three, two, one. Great. Can I have everyone do me a kindness and describe some trash from around your desk? And bring it up here to the front and throw it away for me. I don't know what that is. Oh! Yeah.
Throwing stuff. Who just threw that? What? An eraser. Not it. Not it. There should be no one throwing stuff in glass. Okay. Keep it together. Spring vacation? Yeah. Sorry, Fall sorry, vacation. Sorry. You don't want to do that. Yeah, totally. You have one big vacation. Yeah. Hey, great work today, you guys. Thank Thanks you. for paying attention, Claire. Yeah. Those are some great answers, so I appreciate that. You guys like them? Yeah. That's going to be fun. Right. It's, like it's, it's all uphill. Yeah, come in here and down, you know, and then it takes like an hour to get back. <laughs> Do you live over in Highland? Uh, hey, okay, um, I was just going to see when I could come in and take that uh, okay. continence test because I was there. Yeah, I think I have you scheduled for October 6th okay. to come in during advisory. During yeah. Okay. And, and so they'll just give you a slip for that. Right. You'll just come in and take right. it. Thank you. Thanks, Sawyer. See ya.